Hey everybody, welcome to Project Porsche episode 9, part 4. In this episode, I am going to finish the install of my aftermarket speakers, tie up some loose ends inside the doors, and apply the soundproofing to the inside of my door skins. So stay tuned for this episode of Project Porsche, where I fix up and modify my 924S. Because of limited space and because I want them to fit behind my factory grills, I decided to go with these dual cone Sandpex 4x6s. Basically I think they're like kind of a generic speaker and they were sold as single speakers in packages at AutoZone. Old speaker, new speaker, and if you're wondering how the heck why the new speaker is smashed, it's actually not smashed. This one I did, this one the previous owner did somehow. But this one, I was mocking up the new speakers and I was using my heat gun and somehow I managed to just fan some heat accidentally on this little cup thingy and uh, melted it. Yeah, it definitely sucks, but the good news is I was able to find the same speakers on eBay for $13 a piece. So I ordered a replacement for the one I melted and then an extra set on top of that and that way I'll always have speakers if they blow. Basically these speakers are almost the same in dimensions except for they're a little bit wider underneath here that's why I had to clearance the door out. But besides that they fit in the stock location without hitting the window channel behind the speaker. So even though the speakers are almost the same height, if you get rid of this cardboard ring on here, the magnet is about twice the size. Which means they can handle more power and will pair nicely with my aftermarket Pioneer Stereo. Later I'll be upgrading to a larger set of component speakers in the sail panels, so I'm okay with these somewhat basic speakers for the doors. Plus they were pretty darn inexpensive. Even though I connected these speakers to the factory speaker wire, I decided to run some extra wire into the doors in case I ever need it in the future. That way it's there and I don't have to go through the whole process of taking out the kick panels and running the wire someday if I need it. So I picked up this wire from Walmart and I just added some wire loom, fed it through the doors, and then uh, gathered it up into a clump and wrapped it up with some silicone tape on the driver's side. I'm just gonna use some of this uh, silicone, self-fusing silicone stuff. Wrap that around there nice and tight. It's actually kind of interesting stuff. It makes me wonder how it works exactly. On the passenger side, I wrapped the extra wire around a screwdriver. Then I wrapped it up with some masking tape and then I covered it with some foam rubber so that bundle of wires inside the door wouldn't bounce around and make any noise or rattles until I need to use it someday. I just stuck it back behind there in a, a location where I knew it wouldn't interfere with anything. So the factory speakers had a layer of foam rubber between the metal frame of the speaker and the door skin. So I'm replacing that foam here with some topper weather stripping foam. This weather strip is supposed to be for underneath like a fiberglass topper on a pickup truck. I don't remember why I originally bought it, but it ended up working good for me to use it here behind the speakers. The foam on the driver's side was still pretty much intact, so I just added a little extra foam around the top and sides. But on the passenger side, I replaced all the foam rubber with that topper weather stripping. Next goes in the factory speaker baffles on top of that foam rubber. There I'm just punching the holes for the screws through the uh, weather stripping with an awl. So these are made out of like a neoprene or a latex and they do rip easily so if your speaker baffles are too far gone they do sell other speaker baffles for 4x6 speakers at a bunch of different places on the internet and they're pretty inexpensive. They're made out of a little different material. They're made out of like a, a thin foam rubber but I think they would do the same job as the factory ones. The only thing is you want to make sure you get one that is shallow enough so that it matches the depth of the speaker and isn't wedged up against the window channel. 
They have a nice little hose that's part of the baffle and you have to feed the speaker wires through that thing first. There's like no way of getting those wires through there without doing it first, so make sure you want to feed those wires through first. After I replaced the foam rubber, then I took the latex or neoprene speaker baffles, whatever they're made out of, and super glued them back in place. I think they originally had some sort of adhesive that held them on there, but the adhesive was gone. So I just went around and glued the baffle on top of the foam with that. The next thing I had to do was replace some of these little plastic spacers that I had lost. You can see the arrow is pointing to one of the factory spacers. And unfortunately, somehow I misplaced most of the original ones. So here I'm, I'm making spacers by gluing some washers together. I just layered three of them together and that equaled the same thickness of those factory nylon bushings. These have kind of a funny design. The screws that hold the speakers in actually hold the grills also. So after I put the door panels on, I have to take these screws back out and then put the grill on and then put those screws back in through the grill and that holds everything together. So the nylon bushings go on underneath the speaker. They go on top of the baffle, but underneath the frame of the speaker. So here I'm just adding those spacers in and then screwing the speakers temporarily to the door. And voila, a perfect fit. When I originally pulled off the plastic vapor barrier, most of the glue stayed on the door and I covered it up with some tape to prevent fuzz and dust and whatever else sticking to it while I was working on the car. But I left it on there for a pretty long time. So here I'm taking that tape off and I have to clean the residue from the tape and the glue that was already on the door off here. And so I'm just using some lacquer thinner. Actually it cleaned up pretty easily with the lacquer thinner. I covered up the speakers to protect them while I worked on cleaning up all the glue and residue from the tape. This is how you know when it's clean. And the other door looks pretty good too, so. I utilized those factory screw posts that are welded inside the doors to secure my wiring that I added with the aftermarket door lock kit with some wire ties that had a loop on the end that fit over those studs but I still had to secure them some way to those studs so on the driver's side I used some rubber caps I put some super glue in the cap and then I stuck the caps on the studs and those did a really good job of, of holding those wire ties tight and the wires secure on the inside of the door on the passenger side, I had ran out of those rubber caps, so I used some plastic wall anchors that are made for anchoring uh, pictures or shelves or whatever to sheetrock. I just clipped them off to make them shorter, and then I did the same thing. I put some super glue on the posts, and then I stuck those plastic wall anchors on the posts, and those worked good too. They held those wire ties firmly inside the door on top of those studs. I'd spent so much time and energy on the inside of these doors that I really didn't want to leave anything undone. So I cleaned the bottom of the doors as best I could. And then I took some of that import auto spray that I got on clearance years ago. Ooh, it's for my import. Imported. I'm such a cool douche and put a final coat of paint on the bottom of the doors and really tried to spray it in that seam to protect the bottom from any water, moisture, any corrosion happening that could have started from any little nicks or scratches. I thought, why not? I had everything taken apart, so why not do the best job I can, right? I started over here on the driver's side with my soundproofing. I taped it to the door and I started pushing it and making it form to that inside skin there so that the door panel would fit perfectly on top of it. 
Now this is 80 mil Silas brand soundproofing that I bought off of walmart.com, but you can find it in other places. I think they sell it on Amazon also. So I started on the driver's side door here and what you see there is one full piece. I flattened it out. I used a roller to smooth it out. And then here I'm doing the second piece and I wanted to make sure that I avoided having any any slits or openings on top of where there's holes in the door. So I put my seam in a spot on the door where it was split between solid metal. Here I'm taping it together and then I, I grabbed that poly that originally goes on the door and I laid it on top to see how all my holes looked to see if they were in the right spot and it looked pretty good. So I blew out the door with some compressed air and then I wiped the door skin down one more time with some paint thinner just to make sure the surface was absolutely clean and then I started applying my Silas soundproofing. I shot that spot on the door where I had ground some paint off for my welder with uh, a coat of paint also just to protect it. And then I took some masking tape, I taped up my soundproofing to make sure I had it in the right spot. I did some extra trimming here on the piece that's closer to the front of the door and then I started applying the soundproofing. I got out my heat gun and I removed only part of the paper at a time. I would pull the paper back a little bit, then stick that part of the soundproofing down. And then once I was able to hold the rest of the soundproofing without it accidentally sticking to the door, then I pulled that whole piece of paper off and moved on to the next piece. Smoothing the soundproofing down as absolutely flat and tightly to the door as I could get it. And it went pretty well. I was able to split the seam on the metal of the door so I didn't have any of those gaps or slits in the soundproofing spanning any openings aside from where I had to make the holes for the wires to pass through. In the places where I had to punch a hole through for the wires or like the cable for the door handle, I used some Gorilla Tape and I taped around those holes just to make sure it was absolutely sealed from any moisture that could come through there. I like the way I did it over here on the passenger side better. On this side I taped the soundproofing together to create one large piece. And then I laid my poly over the top of that to make sure all the holes were in the correct spots. And then I just put that one piece on the door like as if it was one solid piece of soundproofing. And it worked pretty good. And slowly but surely I just worked my way out from the center heating it up and then sticking it down bit by bit and i just made sure everything was absolutely pushed down as absolutely flat as i could get it until i had the whole thing completely pressed against the door skin the entire surface of the door was now covered with soundproofing and also a vapor barrier because my soundproofing is now doing the job of the vapor barrier so there it is guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Project Porsche. Next time I'll be showing you some of the custom touches I made to my door panels and I'll get my door panels on and we'll get to hear how my new speakers sound. So thanks for watching guys, if you like the channel, be sure to subscribe so you can watch the transformation right before your eyes. And shout out to all my subscribers, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to check back for new episodes of Project Porsche. I'll see you next time. This is pretty much the worst video ever made. Yeah.